Avenger Oshkosh 2018 and had to come and look at arguably the most unusual aircraft on the field. In fact, I can't say I've personally ever seen a twin engine biplane before. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking to a young gentleman here who has designed an interesting aircraft. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about yourself first mm -hmm. and then we'll get into the aircraft. But what's your background mm -hmm. in this kind of machine here which looks mm -hmm. suspiciously like an RC airplane? Well, uh, typically you might be right. Uh, I have like a large background just making model airplanes. I probably built dozens if not hundreds, maybe close to a thousand different model airplanes right? yeah. from wow. anything with like some of my planes have like had 10 wings on them to try that stuff anything I could basically get my hands on I, I basically built and and so like, those uh, are all RC's yep. you stood on the ground you did your thing yeah this one here is not an RC yeah so basically the history of that I basically kept making planes smaller and they would progress, progressively get bigger and bigger and bigger the largest one was the, uh, 16 feet and had a, and it probably weighed about 40 pounds or so it's a big cargo plane so I did that to see if I could build a plane that large, and it worked great. It was a learning experience. That so, was still RC, though. Still, still RC, control. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's your uh, sort of proof of concept, proof of concept. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it almost looks like you in there, actually. A handsome young guy. So it was a little more serious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is very close to the final version that mm -hmm. I see, though, here yep. that you did. Um, tell me a little bit about the project of building this. Now this is right up your alley from your years of all those RCs yeah. you built. So basically I just cobbled those together today. I just drew it up in a, in CAD. I just basically drew a 2D profile. Is that right? And it went from there, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, they, uh, we used to say that CAD was something that only big mm -hmm. companies did. Yep. And now here we are with you doing the, your, your individual project mm -hmm. and you're using that same technology. Yeah. So <laughs> it's become very democratized. Mm -hmm. Finally, I, I was here last year just looking over the ultralight lines. You know, I was, I kind of want an airplane. I don't really want to buy one because it's a little pricey. I'm not really sure what I want to do. I want to do something a little bit different. So then I went home, built a model of this thing, tested it out, single laser performance and all that. And then finally I just blew it up and built the thing. But I looked at like other air aircraft plans, such as like a Pete and Pole and the, the Mini Max and all that, and kind of copied certain design aesthetics because I didn't really do any actual engineering numbers or calculations. I just basically look at stuff saying, hey, a Pete and Pole uses a, you know, a, a three quarter inch spar that's made out of pop or made out of spruce. So I was like, well, I can do that out of poplar because poplar is just as strong, maybe just a little bit heavier. And I can get away with that. So that's what I did. <laughs> Very cool. So describe, you, you did a little bit there, but describe some of the rest of the construction. Okay. Some people came up to me and said, did you see the styrofoam airplane? And I went, okay, that I got to go look at. So we're here. So tell me why that may not be quite right, but mm. give me some of the detail about the the elements okay. that you use to create your bird here. Well, basically, if you look here, it, it does look like styrofoam. This is probably because it is, but uh, there's actually a spar here, so it's almost traditional construction, basically just missing the actual ribs like you'd see on a normal traditional right. wooden okay. fabric airplane. So I just, so it's hmm. solid foam, though. It's actually cored out. Oh, it is cored yeah, out. Because okay. on the inside, you got to have your spar. A lot lighter, yeah. Okay. So in here, these, these are all actually all pocketed out too, because it saves you a lot of weight. Okay. Because uh, I was surprised how much the foam actually is weighs. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It weighs a bit. So. You kind of think that it just weighs absolutely nothing, yeah. but when you have this much of it, it, it does weighs, add up. It a definitely bit. adds up. So I cored that out. It saved me probably around totally. I probably took about 20 pounds out of the wings coring all the foam out. Right? So that's a wow. lot of foam yeah, in that surface that area. So other than that, it's basically I was looking at. Uh, Burt Rutan because you know even the long easy and all that and this foam is the same density on the piece launch so I was like well it works for him this plane's do what 200 knots plus which is it's foam and fiberglass so I was like well I can make a low performance aircraft just use lighter lighter cloth core it out a little bit lighter it should work <laughs> it should work I yep. love that spirit <laughs> yeah and apparently it does work yeah, you fly yeah. the airplane this is not just a, oh, no, no, a it's thing blown. to look at yeah if you look at my YouTube videos, you'll find it's, it's been flying all around. And I just got done flying it before I brought it up here. I went to about 300 feet, just kind of putzing around, coming down to see how it will perform. And it did all right. Uh, it must have. you got a big smile that you're wearing <laughs> after just, just describing yeah. that. So, All right, so tell me a little bit about the, the parameters of the airplane. How much mm -hmm. does it weigh, for example? Uh, the empty weight of the airplane without batteries is about 210 pounds, give or take five pounds or so, maybe 20, or maybe 10. So okay. with the batteries... So well within yeah. the ultralight yeah, well uh, within the part limits. 103 category. Yep. Well within it. <laughs> yep. and, uh, and, and okay, but with batteries now, talk to me about, it's, mm. it's electric motors. Yep. And uh, I'm interested by this construction you have here. Why is mm. this construction here to hold that motor? It's kind of like model airplane stuff. Like if you've ever seen a firewall on a big gas airplane, they've done stuff like this. But this housing was supposed to hold a radiator because I was going to put water cooling here and, and plumb the jackets for the motors because those things get kind of toasty pretty fast. But the thing is, I may change the different setups so I never got that done. Okay, so right. like, but that's the point of this construction it. that we see here. Yeah, then. and it's just kind of lightweight. So. Okay, yeah. I got that. Um, also, uh, talk, tell me a little bit about the number of batteries that you got on board. Well, the number of batteries, there's nine total. It flies on a 14 cell, 42,000 milliamp battery pack. Okay, and what kind of endurance does that give you? 
Uh, you get about 15 minutes and then you start sweating. <laughs> because you're coming down in a hurry after that. I see. I see. So you got a short amount of time to fly the airplane around, but yeah. you know, in 15 minutes, I'm yeah. guessing you could have some pretty good yeah. fun. It's just a proof of concept to see if I can do it. It's just a big model, model electric airplane, so I gotta it's, ask it's you highly impractical. Somebody is going to ask, so mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the question too. What kind of investment did you have in this? Well, I've never built an airplane before, so I probably blew about 6K on random stuff that I didn't really know if I needed or not. Okay, but that, is that the investment you got in the aircraft? Yeah, about so, yeah. Okay, and some of it you didn't even need, so it's really less than that if you yeah. were to do it again. Yeah, if I were to decide, I'd probably spend close close to about the 2K. $2,000 yeah. to build what we see here. Mm -hmm. So there you go, folks. If that doesn't define affordable aviation, I'm not sure what does. Tell me a little bit about how it actually flies. It flies like a wet paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so slow that there's not a whole lot of airflow over the control surfaces. And I need to rig up the differential better on the ailerons. That's when you know you dip an aileron, you pull one up. Right, the right. dipped air airflow on the one aileron is dragging you back, so that wing's supposed to go up, but the drag is pulling it down, so it just kind of teeters around a little bit. So you got to be give it some time. But the rudder and elevator are pretty good. So. Do you fly it mostly in calm conditions? Then I'm guessing. But yeah, most of this plane only flies in calm conditions, just uh, early mornings and late evenings. So no, it's it's designed for no cross wing capability because it's really short too. Yeah, now I noticed you even have uh, wheel pants on mm -hmm. it, also with the yep. foam construction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you kind of made use of that everywhere. And I love looking inside mm -hmm. the cockpit here. You've got uh, what looks like a cardboard box holding mm -hmm. your controllers. Yep. And, uh, it's just, it's a beautiful job of mm -hmm. using the least materials mm -hmm. possible to make an airplane yep. that flies. It's definitely an ultralight. So I was like, well, everyone seems to be building ultralights just right on the cusp of too heavy. So I was like, well, I'm just going to just make something light and just fly around. Very cool, very cool. Uh, tell me a little bit about the amount of, we talked about the amount of dollar investment yep. that you put into the aircraft. Talk to me now in terms of time. How much time did you spend, mm. I guess, noodling about it and mm. then actually executing? Well, since uh, it was built last year, I came back, you know, like I mentioned from uh, watching the old flights over there. So I went back in August. I got a new puppy dog. You'll see the dog in the videos, too. <laughs> so then I started, I constructed the airplane in one day, the model. And I was like, I was happy in about at the end of the week. So then I just blew it up, built it. And by October of last year, I flew it. So it was only about two and a half months. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Hey, you're yeah. an ambitious young fella. Mm -hmm. And obviously got it done right. So mm -hmm. that's encouraging too. Mm -hmm. but the source of these materials, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't see this stuff in aircraft spruce catalog. <laughs> well, all the A&R. Oh, I might oh, yeah. in the future, I'm thinking now. But tell me what <laughs> this is, mm -hmm. where you got all this okay. stuff. Well, all the A&R hardware came from uh, local sources and all that. So that's where, it's all aviation grade. Okay. But the styrofoam and some of the salt and some of the uh, aircraft, that came from Lowe's, so you can actually see the Lowe's logo on the <laughs> yeah, back. Just, I do actually yeah. see it. That's something a Lowe's air, 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 aircraft is a shock factor. Everyone was like, is that Lowe's foam? And I'm like, <laughs> yes indeed it is. But it's fiberglass and it works for other people, so just I'll just leave it bare just to freak people out. But the, cool. um, the wings themselves, this is one pound density EPS. It's like your standard ice chest cooler foam. It's actually kind of terrible to work with, but it's really light. And if you glass it, it's not all that bad. Plus, you know, I can actually... I can sit on the leading Is that edges. right? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see you do that, not, but there you are. It's not so. bad. Yeah, well, I tell you, it may look sort of mm. fragile. It doesn't mm. feel fragile yeah. at all. And the funny thing is the storms that rolled through here a few days ago, uh, yeah. I left it out here. Is that right? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't even rock or move. It just stayed still. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Mm. What did I, mm. Arguably the most interesting Part 103 vehicle I see, mm. well, in a long time, not just here this week. Mm. Give me your web address where people can follow okay. what you're doing, please. Well, if you go to YouTube and you search uh, Peter Streeple, there you'll find all the videos for the airplane. And if you can go to my website, it's uh, peterstreeple.com. You can find out a little bit more about the airplane. I don't have a whole lot there, so just visit the YouTube page and you'll find everything. All right, so the YouTube is going to give us not only images, but also words yeah. and, and can convey information yeah. to people. That's where you see the videos of flying and, and buzzing over the trees and stuff and flying over some water and all that. Very so. cool, very cool. Well, I love the smile that comes out on your face when you talk about flying it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing pilots mm -hmm. love, so yeah. we'll keep an eye on you, but clearly this is an aircraft uh, that fits the category very well, mm -hmm. even if it looks rather unusual. Mm -hmm. A twin engine, Biplane. I, I like don't think factor. I've ever seen that before, <laughs> so that's very cool. You can find that and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Peter and myself here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.